Here are the top stories for today, March 11, 2021. Work in progress. Around 117,000 doses of Pfizer-BioNTech's COVID-19 vaccines will arrive in the country by April. Local government units tighten measures to curb the rise in COVID-19 cases. Checkpoints are back on some roads as the PNP steps in to help contain the pandemic. Bracing for the big one, the country holds a nationwide simultaneous earthquake drill for the first quarter of the year. And from insurgency to prosperity, Batangas joins the list of provinces declared as areas with stable internal peace and security. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. More doses of COVID-19 vaccines are set to arrive in the country. Testing czar and National Task Force Against COVID-19 Deputy Chief Implementer Vince Dizon said Pfizer-BioNTech will send some 117,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccine next month. Once the 117,000 Pfizer vaccines arrive in April, the country is expected to receive more than 3.2 million COVID-19 vaccines for healthcare workers. Nag-commit na po ang WHO na darating po yung 117,000 doses ng Pfizer ngayong April sa susunod na buwan. Kaya malaking bagay din po ito, uh, galong galo na para sa ating mga healthcare workers na priority natin matapos uh, hanggang sa buwan ng uh, Abril at Mayo. Meanwhile, the Philippine Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, is visiting Gamalaya Institute's manufacturing facility in Russia next week for the Anticipated Emergency Use Authorization, or EUA, of Sputnik V vaccine in the country. FDA Director General Eric Domingo earlier said EUA may be granted to Sputnik V within the next two weeks. Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Loxin Jr. also shared that Manila may get up to 20 million doses of the Russian-made vaccine. The government aims to start the vaccination of the general public by the middle of the year as soon as the inoculation program for healthcare workers and senior citizens is done. National Task Force Deputy Chief Implementer Vince Dizon said the COVID-19 immunization program for the general public will be done in time for the arrival of more vaccines that the government ordered from various vaccine makers. Pagdating ng Moderna at ng iba pang mga bako, eh, uh, magapit na po tayo o magsisimula na tayo sa ating general population. Objective po is pagkatanggap po ng bakuna, kahit ano po yung brand yan, ay Ibakuna po agad-agad sa ating mga healthcare workers as fast as we can. Pwede po tayong mag-3, 2 to 3 shifts per day para po pagdating sa babakuna ng general population natin, eh mas marami at mas mabilis. Meanwhile, a symbolic vaccination was held at St. Paul's Hospital in Iloilo City. Testing Czar Secretary Vince Dizon witnessed the event this morning together with Iloilo City Mayor Jerry Trenas. Last week, the city received 6,000 doses of Sinovac vaccines for frontliners and employees of COVID-19 referral hospitals. Health experts clarified that getting a vaccine passport after having been inoculated is not a guarantee that an individual will not spread or get infected with COVID-19 anymore. Dr. Anna Ong Lim, a member of the Department of Health's Technical Advisory Group, said vaccine passports will merely serve as a record that an individual has been vaccinated. The proof of vaccination will be similar to yung mga ginagamit na, ng seaman, yung mga seaman's pass, yung mga yellow card nila dati na nagpapatunay na meron silang uh, yellow fever vaccination at saka yung iba pang mga hinahanap no? para dun sa mga particular na bansa na pinupuntahan nila. Record lang siya pero hindi ibig sabihin na uh, totally uh, hindi na siya mahahawaan or manghahawa pa. Kahit na nabakunahan na uh, ang mga healthcare workers, pinag-iingat pa rin ang lahat kasi Iyon ng uh, paglipat ng sakit, whether mahawaan or mga hawa, eh hindi kasama dun sa datos na hawak natin sa ngayon. 
Meanwhile, Dr. John Wong, who is also a member of the technical working group, said the Philippine Genome Center has detected several cases of both the UK and South Africa variant of the virus that causes COVID-19. There's probably more uh, UK variant than South African variant. No? Uh, but we're, we're, we're continuing to, to collect samples no, from, from cases uh, so that we can, uh, we can tell how, how widespread it is no, in, uh, in NCR and in the country. The increase in cases is probably due to several factors. No? Uh, uh, one is the variant. No? Second is probably also compliance no, with uh, <coughs> masking. No? You know, third factor is uh, uh, delay in uh, delay in uh, going to the doctor or getting tested no, when you have symptoms. Uh, so if we're able to adjust these three factors, now we can control control the surge. Quezon City and Avotas intensify their efforts to help contain the spread of COVID-19. In Quezon City, some areas are now under granular lockdown as the health department noted the presence of the UK and South African COVID-19 variants. The details from Late Kabagani. 18 coronavirus disease cases of different variants have been recorded in Quezon City. The Department of Health reports that 13 individuals were found to have the United Kingdom B117 variant, 4 with the South African variant, while they are still clarifying if the remaining case is a Brazilian variant or only a variant of concern. Mayor Joy Belmonte said as she believes the presence of the COVID-19 UK B11 variant and the South African variant has contributed to the case surge. Meanwhile, 16 areas in the city are now placed under the special concern lockdown. Belmonte clarified that they are only placing portion of villages where there is a concentration of COVID-19 cases. Three barangay halls will be closed for them to be able to test their barangay personnel after some tested positive for COVID-19. The city government will be distributing food packs and essential kits to the affected families and that they will undergo swab testing and the mandatory 14-day quarantine. In Navotas, residents are reminded anew on the importance of wearing face masks at all times outside their home to help contain the community transmission of COVID-19. Mayor Toby Chanko issued a three-strike policy in which barangay officials will be slapped with gross neglect of duty for failure to implement existing ordinances of the city council. The memorandum was issued after the city government receives a numerous complaints on the improper wearing of face masks and violation of curfew hours among minors in Navotas. Meanwhile, checkpoints will be back on the roads as part of efforts to curb the rise in COVID-19 cases. In a radio interview, PNP spokesperson Brigadier General Ildebrande Osana said they will tap again the Special Action Force for the measure. These staff personnel will be deployed in areas with a high number of COVID-19 cases. Osana expressed hope that the public will also be compliant regarding the imposition of minimum health and safety protocols. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Laid Kabagani. Marawi City rolls out its vaccination drive as medical frontliners in the war-torn city are hoping to go back to normal the soonest possible time. The details from Claire Gighe. The Amai Pak Pak Medical Center or APMC in Marawi City has started the inoculation against coronavirus disease 19 or COVID-19 Monday, March 8 after receiving allocated Sinovac vaccines. There are about 900 frontliners of APMC who are expected to be vaccinated as they were the only ones who signified and signed to undergo the vaccination program. According to their analysis, this is because others were affected by fake news while some were drawn to the idea that this is China made. Following this event, APMC's Muammar Kazim reminded the public to not dwell in fake news circulating on social media. Further, APMC doctors urged the public to take any of the vaccines against the COVID-19. I encourage everybody na magpa-vaccine po tayo para bumalik na po tayo sa normal. Para makabalik na po sa normal na pagbuhayan yung mga kaibigan natin, mga kapamilya natin. So, uh, vaccination is the only way for us to to end this pandemic. Without this vaccination, this will continue for 
Meanwhile, the city health office also in Marawi City started its rollout for their 87 healthcare workers. According to CHO head Dr. Ali Dalidig, these were the only ones who gave their consent to be inoculated, but currently this continues to hike up, which they are happy of. For PNA Newsroom, Claire Gigge of the Philippine Information Agency, Ligan City Information Center. The government is set to start the inoculation drive for the public once it wraps up the vaccination of frontliners and other essential personnel. Are you willing to get the jabs? Let's hear what some of our kababayans have to say in today's Bosses ng Masa. Eh, pag talagang ano, okay. Wala naman pong problema. Okay, magpapaano, pabakuna. Kung talagang safe, yun ang ano, oh, walang problema. Uh, sa, para po sa akin, as long as po yung, uh, yung side effects po, hindi naman po nagtatagal ng, ano, ng tatlong buwan po. Pwede naman po siguro. Oo, oh, walang problema sa akin. Kung yun naman talaga yung kinakailangan para hindi ka mahawa ng mga ano, COVID, di ba? Walang problema sa akin, okay lang yun. Okay naman po para sa kaligtasan naman po natin yun. Still to come, it's time for duck cover and hold again as the country holds a nationwide earthquake drill. And the Philippine mission to Geneva comes in defense of last weekend's police operations in Calabarzon. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Sa matinding laban natin sa Coronavirus Disease 2019, sugpuin din natin ang pagkalat ng fake news. Huwag magbahagi ng impormasyon na hindi tiyak ang pinagmulan. I-check mabuti ang source ng balita. Kumuha lamang ng impormasyon mula sa mga official channel ng Department of Health. Huwag magpadala sa maling balita. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Pangalagaan ng sarili laban sa Coronavirus Disease 2019. Hanggat maaari, umiwas sa mataong lugar. Iwasang hawakan ang ilong at bibig. Maging malinis sa katawan at ugaliin ang wastong paghuhugas ng kamay. Takpan ang ilong at bibig kung uubo o babahing. Umiwas sa mga taong nagpapakita ng sintomas ng coronavirus disease gaya ng lagnat, ubo at sipon. Magsuot ng face mask kung kinakailangan. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. It pays to be prepared in every disaster or emergency situation. And in preparation for the big one, the country held its first quarter nationwide simultaneous earthquake drill today. The nationwide drill was held online for the third time as mass gatherings remain banned due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Officials from the Office of Civil Defense led the activity through a ceremonial pressing of an alarm button, followed by the gestures of duck, cover, and hold by participants. Participants were limited to doing the drills individually in their homes or offices as there were no evacuation drills held. The quarterly activity aims to boost public awareness and preparedness for a strong earthquake due to the movement of the West Valley Fault. Private polling firm Pulse Asia reveals that Filipino voters prefer Senator Christopher Lawrence Bongo and President Rodrigo Duterte to be their respective president and vice president of the country in 2022. Pulse Asia says the Go Duterte tandem earned the highest voter preference, getting the nod of 32% of the respondents nationwide. The pair received the highest score in Mindanao at 62%, followed by the Visayas at 39%. Metro Manila at 21% and Balance Luzon at 18%. The possible pairing of Senator Grace Poe and Senate President Vicente Soto III is second on the list with 32%. 
Next to the Po Soto pair are the possible tandems of former Senator Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Senator Manny Pacquiao, as well as of Senator Panfilo Lacson and Manila City Mayor Francisco Isco Moreno Domagoso. The possible tandem of Vice President Maria Leonor Obredo and Senator Francis Pangilinan got the lowest voter preference at 8%. The 2.34 billion peso road project that will connect the towns of San Jose in Tarlac and Palawig in Zambales is expected to boost the ecotourism industry of the two provinces. The 36.9 kilometer access road is targeted to be completed and opened to the motoring public by next year. Tarlac First District Engineer Erelina Santos said the construction activities which started in 2018, will shorten the travel time between Tarlac and Zambales. The Philippine mission to the United Nations in Geneva defended as legitimate the police operations in Calabarzon that resulted in the death of nine people and the arrest of six others on March 7. This after the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights denounced what it describes as arbitrary killing. The Philippine mission said the OHCHR has prejudged the operations and was uninformed of facts on the ground. It said the operations were carried out within the bounds of law, citing the 40 search warrants for illegal firearms and explosives secured after a rigorous legal process. When deaths occur during law enforcement operations, investigations are automatically launched in the Philippines. It asked OHCHR to correct hasty opinions favoring violators of the law and instead support efforts to uphold law and order. In our business news, the government vows to continue investing in social and economic services and programs to bolster the domestic economy's recovery from the pandemic. Finance Undersecretary Hil Beltran said fiscal policy will be supportive of programs aimed at reviving the economy. He noted that the domestic economy posted improvements since the third quarter of 2020 following the easing of quarantine restrictions. Economic managers aim for economic recovery of 6.5 to 7.6 percent this year. Beltran said higher government spending and measures like the proposed corporate recovery and tax incentive for enterprises and the Financial Institution Strategic Transfer or FIST Act are seen as the main economic drivers for this year. Beltran cited the continued construction of infrastructure like roads and bridges, which have the highest multiplier effect in the economy. He also underscored the positive impact of the government's digital initiatives implemented amid the enhanced community quarantine. Up next, test before travel, we find out what tourist destinations still require the submission of COVID-19 test results for visitors. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Tandaan ang tamang paraan ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng kamay upang makaiwas sa iba't ibang karamdaman. Basain ng tubig ang mga kamay at sabunin. Unang sabunin ang mga palad at ang likod ng mga kamay. Kuskusin na maigi ang pagitan ng mga daliri at maging ang mga kuko. Isunod ang pagitan ng mga hinlalaki at kuskusin ng paigot ang mga dulo ng mga daliri sa magkabilang palad. Banlawang mabuti ang mga kamay sa malinis na tubig at patuyuin ang mga kamay gamit ang single-use towel o air dryer. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Alamin ang mga dapat gawin sa lugar ng trabaho laban sa Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ang mga kumpanya ay dapat magbigay ng face mask sa kanilang mga empleyado. Bukod dito, magbigay kaalaman din patungkol sa COVID-19. Siguraduhing malinis ang kapaligiran. Maglagay ng sabon at hand sanitizer sa mga palikuran. Siguraduhing ligtas at nalutong maigi ang mga pagkain sa kantina. 
Obserbahan ang kalusugan ng mga empleyado at katrabaho. Kung sakali man na mayroon silang sintomas ng coronavirus disease, gaya ng lagnat, ubot sipon, at hirap sa paghinga, ay agad ipasuri sa doktor. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to! Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. You're still watching the PNA Newsroom. The government is finalizing a training program to improve the investigative skills of prosecutors assigned to handle alleged cases of extrajudicial killings and human rights violations. Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara said the project follows the Human Rights Summit spearheaded by the DOJ last December. The DOJ is part of the Administrative Order 35 Task Force, the Interagency Committee on Extrajudicial Killings and Forced Disappearances, Torture and Other Grave Violations on the Right to Life, Liberty and Security of Persons. Meanwhile, Guevara expressed misgivings about a statement attributed to Ravina Shamdasani, spokesperson for the UN Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, on the death of nine individuals in last weekend's search warrant operations in Calabarzon. Guevara said anyone must have sufficient information before making a judgment. In a statement, Shamdasani decried what she called an escalation in violence, intimidation, harassment, and red tagging of human rights defenders. The Philippine Army has declared the province of Batangas as now free from communist insurgency. 2nd Infantry Division Commander Major General Greg Almerol and Batangas Governor Hemir Lando Madana led the signing of a memorandum of agreement at the provincial capital on Wednesday. The MOA declares Batangas as an area with stable internal peace and security due to the absence of recorded New People's Army activities for at least one year. Mandanas thank the different agencies, soldiers, and police who helped the province attain peace, prosperity, and development. Almerol, meanwhile, expressed hope that Batangas would now be able to further enhance its commercial viability, tourism, and other opportunities. And in Pangasinan, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, or PDEA, has declared Barangay Kalumbuyan in Sual Town as drug cleared. PDEA Pangasinan Assistant Provincial Director Rechi Camacho said the barangay has passed the assessment and validation of the Regional Oversight Committee. The local government unit of Sual Town said it has a plan to build a Bahay Silangan that will serve as a home for drug offenders while undergoing a reformation program. At least 1,039 out of the 1,272 drug-affected barangays in Pangasinan were declared drug-cleared. COVID-19 testing for visitors will remain in place in some tourist destinations set to reopen this month. Among these are Boracay, Bohol, Ilocos Sur, El Nido, Coron, Puerto Princesa, and San Vicente in Palawan. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat also clarified that some Luzon destinations opening up this month would also require a negative test result such as Pangasinan and La Union, as well as Siargao, Siquijor, Dumaguete, Iloilo, and Cebu City in Visayas. The Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases removed the mandatory testing except when the local government unit requires it before travel. The Philippine Sports Commission and the Commission on Higher Education, or CHED, will team up to further develop sports in the collegiate level. PSC Chairman Butch Ramirez and CHED Chairman Prospero de Vera signed a memorandum of agreement that will kick off the development drive. Under the said agreement, the PSC and CHED will work together to provide ample training for student-athletes, coaches and sports officials, as well as continuing education to ensure optimal training and coaching skills. Ramirez said this PSC-CHED partnership might pave the way to discover athletes and coaches who can excel in the amateur, professional, and national team levels. More details on the PSC-CHED partnership will be furnished during the National Sports Summit. Here's the latest in our community billboard. 
Social media giant Facebook's blood donations feature is now available in the Philippines. Facebook has partnered with the Department of Health and the Philippine Red Cross to encourage more people to donate blood. Facebook users can sign up to get notifications about donating blood and information on nearby DOH and PRC blood service facilities. Since 2017, over 85 million people have signed up for the blood donation feature. To register as a blood donor on Facebook, search for the blood donations feature or log on to facebook.com slash donate blood or read about it on Facebook's social impact website. Meanwhile, the Commission on Elections' main office in Intramuros will be closed for two weeks until March 24 due to reported cases of COVID-19. The offices of the Regional Election Director of the National Capital Region, Region 4A and Region 4B will also remain closed. Comelec spokesperson James Jimenez said this is implemented as a precaution to prevent the spread of the SARS-CoV-2 virus in view of reports of recent transmission among their employees. For queries, he said the public may contact Comelec offices through their emails and social media accounts. And here's another look at today's biggest stories. Work in progress. Around 117,000 doses of Pfizer-BioNTech's COVID-19 vaccines will arrive in the country by April. Local government units tighten measures to curb the rise in COVID-19 cases. Checkpoints are back on some roads as the PNP steps in to help contain the pandemic. Bracing for the big one, the country holds a nationwide simultaneous earthquake drill for the first quarter of the year. And from insurgency to prosperity, Batangas joins the list of provinces declared as areas with stable internal peace and security. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, visit our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I'm William Theo. Good day and stay safe, everyone.